Hi everybody and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. The fly that I'm going to be tying for you today is called the Utah Killer Bug. This fly came to me um, whenever one of my buddies and I were standing outside our vehicles at the end of the day. We were exchanging some flies and he showed this to me and told me how well it worked. Well, Tom was right. Um, Tom's my buddy. He lives out in State College, Pennsylvania. He uses this fly a lot and what's nice about this fly is that it involves a hook, some lead wire, and this yarn. This yarn is called Jameson's Shetland Spindrift Yarn. The color's Oyster. Um, Tom has told me it's really easy to tie, however, the key is you have to really bind this tight, and I'll explain that during the video. Tom also has a couple variations, so I'll share those as he said it was, I was more than welcome to pass those on to everybody in the YouTube viewing world, and I'll do that. Whenever you're fishing this fly, you're going to want to fish it deep. Um, it's meant to represent crane fly larva uh, or a crest bug slash scud. They're really abundant in the State College area but they are also very abundant in all other streams across our country and in a few other streams around the world. So um, if I were you, I would have a few of these in your box. The size can really vary. If you're fishing a crane fly, you're going to want to use a two extra large hook or a two extra long hook versus if you're fishing it for a scud, you're going to want to use a scud hook, a little bit of a smaller hook, but kind of, you know, make sure you have that wider shank so you have a little bit of hooking power there. Um, there's not really much more I want to share about this bug, but I will share that whenever I start tying it. I want to give a quick shout out to Jim Bernstein over at Eldridge Brothers Fly Shop up in Maine. Um, one of Jim's customers had been watching my videos and noticed that one of the, the t-shirts I wear in the background is one of their old uh, t-shirts from their shop. He noticed it, kind of sent a little shout out to me saying, hey, thanks for wearing that. Um, he noticed that the shirt's pretty old. I think I've had that shirt for five or six years, but it's one of those oldies but goodies. Um, Jim said, hey, he wanted to send me a free t-shirt. He said he wanted no advertising out of it whatsoever, but I got to give him a quick shout out. Thanks, Jim, for my new Eldridge Brothers t-shirt. Sent me a little sticker as well. If you're ever up in Maine, um, look up this shop. They've got a great website. They're always sending me these emails um, about all these awesome activities they have going on. But I'm in Pennsylvania. I can't just run up to Maine every weekend, though I wish I could. But if you guys have a chance, be sure to check out their website. And if you're up in Maine, stop over and say hi to Jim for me. All right, with that said, I'm going to list the materials for the Utah Killer Bug. I'm going to tie the original and then show you some of the variations that Tom has shared with me. All right, let's start tying this Utah Killer Bug. Here's a look at the finished pattern. You can see it's real, you know, it's all bunched up very tight together. It gives almost just a, a natural ribbing to it. I'll show you how to do that. Let me first get the hook in the vise. Um, when I place my hook in the vise for this pattern, I like to place it closer to the, um, to the point because I do tend to wrap down, um, down the bend of the hook when tying in this pattern. I'm using an Allen fly fishing hook. They're N203 uh, B out. It's a barbless. Tom recommends a size 14, which is what I am using today. Whenever we get to the two extra long hook, I'll just kind of show you those and talk to you a little bit more about that. When I'm using a 2XL hook, I'll go the whole way up to 025 with lead wire. But in this case, Tom recommends an 020 or an 015. I like the 015, just a little less weight. I get around 8 to 10 wraps on it. All right, next is the thread. I'm trying to get this little point down. For the thread, you'll see this tie with a, a couple different colors. Sorry, this lead wire is not liking me right now. All right, um, the most common color that you'll see tied on the Utah Killer Bug, it's like a pale pink. Goes well with the, the scuds. Tom also really likes to tie it with red. Though today I'm going to change it up a little bit and use more of a, a, a tannish gray color. It's, this is called a, a, a tan, but it's a very nondescript tan. Not a lot there. I'm just going to lock all my lead wire in place first. And what I can tell you, it seems like one of the most essential parts of this fly is really building a nice taper from the back up to the lead wire covering that lead wire and then also tapering back down to the eye of the hook. I'm using a, um, a smaller thread, more of an 8-aught thread, but you will notice a lot of guys will use a 6-aught because then they can kind of speed this process up. It's truly up to you. 
All right, I'll stop right there. I'm going to grab my main material, or my only material, this Jameson Shetland Spindrift yarn. Again, the color is Oyster. Okay. Lock it in place. You're going to see me going just a little bit down the bend, as I mentioned before. I want to make sure I have a smooth transition, smooth taper. Okay, and then I am going to just lock my thread in place because I'm going to use the rotary uh, feature of my vise. All right, next I'm going to grab this material. I grab it with my material clip. I just be recently began using this. It's called a Stonfo material clip. Uh, this is a company out of Italy. When you click it up, you can see there's a nice little grabber. So I can just grab onto this, this uh, yarn anywhere I want. I'm actually going to grab a little bit closer towards me. But it's a really nice clip. It's a, it's a larger clip. They have a couple different sizes of it, but it works really well. What's nice though, and I'll, I'll just leave this all one piece, to get this pattern going, I'm sorry, let me clip this little section off. Once I have it locked into my clip, I just start twisting. You want it really tight. Tom recommends super tight, and I will do the same. Now the question is, what's super tight? When I let go, and just let it go towards itself, it will slowly start to kind of coil. You don't want it to slowly start to coil. You want it like nearly spring, springing towards the, that hook. All right, so I believe I have it a little tighter now. I'll just slowly let it go. You can see it instantly coil up. That's telling me I have it tight. All right, once you have it to that desired, that kind of just that desired tightness, I'm going to just take my fingernail and scrape it along. You can also use Velcro for this just to expose some of those little fibers. You want those little fibers just hanging off. Give it that buggy appearance. I tighten it a few more, and then I'm just going to start wrapping. Your first couple wraps may go down if they do. Just make sure your second wrap starts going off in the right direction. You'll know you're doing it correctly if it looks like it's if it looks like the ribbing's being done for you. That's how it should look. If it ever doesn't look like it's being naturally ribbed, just spin it a few more times, tighten it, then continue wrapping towards the eye of the hook. Once I get near the eye, I'm going to tie off about two turns back. So about right here is where I'm going to tie off. Don't be afraid to back it off one more turn if you want. If you back it off one more turn, that's not a bad thing. Uh, whenever I tie in a hot spot, I will back it off a couple. In this case, I'm going to stop it right there. I really just like having a clean eye. Okay, get that extra out of the way. I'm going to get a quick half hitch. Whip finish. And this Utah killer bug is ready to fish. So that is really just how simple this fly is. I'll give you the the look all around. It just has that natural ribbing to it. Just a slick fly. If you want to take some Velcro on the bottom, you definitely can. Uh, I consider this kind of like a guides fly in the sense that they can be tied really quickly and they catch fish. As I mentioned earlier, there's a couple variations. So let me show you a few of the variations of this fly. An easy one, one that Tom really likes to do, is just by adding a bead. You can use a regular gold or, or brass colored bead, or if you want to go with a certain color, you can do that as well. But just to give it a little bit more weight, that's a tungsten I have on there right now. Um, plus, it just gives it a little bit of shine when it's going through the water. Another easy thing to do, and as I mentioned before, I kind of stop my wrapping a little bit further back, is just to add a little hot spot. I love putting some hot spots on these flies. Just use a little glow bright pink. You can use orange, chartreuse. It's truly up to you. Um, I put a fairly large head on whenever I put on a hot spot. Sometimes I'll just make it so it just has a couple different wraps. On this fly, I like, you know, four or five going back. It's, I don't think it's a bad thing to really have that hot spot there um, showing itself. And then finally, as I mentioned before, for the crane fly larva, 
we tend to fish that in a little bit larger sizes. This is a size 12, uh, two extra long hook with crane fly larva. Um, I have .025 lead wire underneath this. I don't have a bead or anything. I just, again, just wound it really tight and put on that, um, that Jameson's Shetland spin drift yarn. Just wound that the, the whole way up. This is a really silly fly, but it just seems to catch fish. Um, I have another fly that I've tied earlier that's very similar to this. Um, with a, It actually had a hot spot on it. And I'll put that link up right now. Hopefully you see it popping up on this, um, this video so you can see another really simple one that looks just like this. All right, so with that said, let me get back to the one I just tied for you guys. And I'll put this back on here for you. Um, but again, this was the, uh, the Utah Killer Bug. Uh, I appreciate my buddy Tom out in State College for sharing this fly with me and, and then allowing me to share it with all of you guys. This is a fly that just just to be brief, catches fish. So I recommend you guys checking this out, uh, tying a bunch of these, get them in your box, and let me know how you do. With that said, I, uh, thanks for all the feedback you guys have been giving me. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks, Tom, and thanks, everybody else.